Welcome to the flashing lights tutorial update for the EMS. As you can see that during the updates we now have a background wallpaper just like the police and the fire department do. And in here we can choose between male or female. We have different bodies that we can select based on who we want to choose, different kinds of hat selections, if you want to wear glasses or not, as well as the face mask. Now, when we're out here, we can choose the different vehicles that we need because we have this one here for changing the role and this one here for selecting a vehicle. So, we come in here and conduct our vehicle selections to what we want to use. You have this vehicle, this one, uh, this one, as well as this one. Now, um, I don't really use these because uh, uh, I can't carry patients in the back of this. And in my opinion, there's, I don't, uh, there's, if I'm going to go to a call, I'm going to take one of these trucks here and run that instead because the, uh, we're talking about taking care of the patient, transporting the patient, and and whatnot. But hey, you know, each to their own. If you want to use these, arrive there ahead of time before the ambulance, or do whatever treatment. It's whatever is working for you. But uh, this is what I choose. You can edit the lights, select the node that you plan to do it with, uh, there are different ways that the node can be expressed. Just find the one that you want to use. Or if you don't want the node, then you just do that. Close this out to go to the next one. I forgot to point that out in the others. And then once you set up your truck, you're good to go. Now, if you go in the single player, you can set up your equipment the way you want to use it. Because when you go into multiplayer, it changes nothing. Single player, multiplayer are modes. So they have no bearing on your score, your stats, much less your vehicle. One turns on for online. The other one has it off. And that's the end of that. Now, once you selected your vehicle and you got it. There are... Uh, you have your light system. And then you have your, should be, yeah, your auxiliary lights. For when it's nighttime. And uh, then you got all your goodies that are located in the back. Now, back here, they have extended more goodies than they did before. So you have items like your medical bag, but now you got the fracture kit. Technical, you have a defibrillator. Then you have your additionals. Now, for me, when I role play, I don't set this up. I'm not the fire department, not the police. I, I'm here to rescue people that are in dire straits and need to go to the hospital. So I don't mess with anything that's in here. That's basically what I do. Everybody's different. Uh, grab structure. So we still have this. <laughs> it's still difficult to use. But uh, that's the equipment that's located in the back of this. So... It's pretty much simple. It's probably the one of the most more easier um, roles to actually kind of do. As you can see from my stats, this is one of the least ones I play. But uh, when I do play, it would be I wouldn't be parked here. I'd actually I actually park at the fire station. It's red. I do the paramedic thing because the 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 difference between the EMT and the paramedic was. I guess back in the early 60s, the 
the um, our late 60s somehow or not sure exactly whose idea I think it's between the fire department and the doctors felt that if somehow an emergency response team was sent to some of these emergency calls then the patients had a higher chance of surviving like a car wreck or something because the ambulance service provided by the hospital because at that time it was I, I don't know about now because we have uh, EMT services that are provided by Daly's Johnson's and stuff like that which are not hospitals they're companies contracted with the hospital and they they do get called out to certain calls and uh, or they're be contacted to do a transport of a senior citizen from some place for maybe an elderly home to go to the hospital or transfer a body or transfer someone from one hospital to another that's what I end up seeing them use paramedics though are provided by the fire department based on the uh, service that that county or state or whatever that county or city wants to provide and these guys almost have like they're like almost um, advanced medical like doctor training because I was in a paramedic vehicle once being transported to a hospital uh, it looks like a mobile trauma center on wheels I wouldn't be surprised if they could operate you in one of these and the paramedics have full contact with the doctor at all times so they are actually speaking to the hospital they're taking me to and these are really associated a lot with the fire department that's why I park it up here where EMTs they deal with they are agencies that are probably registered with 911 uh, registered with the hospital for other services but um, that's my point and why I park here everybody will place different but this is where I mostly park if there doesn't have that much fire department personnel I have a tendency to park actually in this last stall uh, or a stall that's not occupied if it's got a lot of people then I will park here so I'm out of the fire department's way because my whole purpose to being on this side of the map is I'm part of the fire department as a paramedic. That's my logic when I'm doing this. Uh, that's about it. Even though that I'm on with the EMTs, uh, that's how I see it. So anyways, so let's go ahead and make a run here. up on our call right now and as we can see we got our tow truck and, and our police vehicle so we need to find our patient there's our patient so what we need to do is we need to get in here and uh, get our medical bag because you cannot touch this patient without it then we go with our inspection so we're going to check and inspect the locations so it's talking that the right leg there's no poles possible bone fracture Poles. So this patient having no pulse may be in real serious trouble. So what we need to do is we need to get his shirt off and perform CPR. So then 
We need to get a defibrillator. I have no idea why that officer is so close. He's really in the middle of a location he has no business in. I need room to work. As they say. Now, so um, these are the EKG leads or ECG as it's listed. This is what's going to give our reading of what's going on. Okay, I think this is what they call out of out of rhythm, which he's not flatlined. So if we go to shock him, it'd be a lot easier, maybe. Um, so we're going to apply the shock pads. As soon as I can get the location, there we go. All right. So let's hit him. Let's try it again. I think we do it one more time. Okay, that's not working out at all. So we're going to have to perform the CPR again. I mean, is the defibrillator supposed to handle that? Uh, I don't really know much about this field. I think it does. I mean, from what I've seen prior in other cases, uh, I've seen this shock uh, supposedly pulls them out. So we like shock them all day long. Okay, so his status apparently is bad enough where that's not, I hate that. It's probably bad enough where that is not going to be enough. So I guess we come here and run CPR on him again. I guess you can run two EMTs. One guy, as long as one of them is grabbing something, I'm supposing, I don't know. not working out for this subject. Maybe it's because this police officer is standing in the way of my work area. Should be at least about maybe about four or five feet away. Before I do that again. Maybe we need to call a real paramedic. EMT's not getting it done. Still not doing it. I think we're going to do is we're going to end up, uh, I don't know. It's like I can't get this guy to pull out of it. He's just diving. Because nothing else seems to be getting this done. See, there he is. He's still down. Okay. He 
he's got it. He has to leave. There is nothing more we could do for him. We're not a paramedic. We're not a paramedic, paramedic. And therefore, we have no way to uh, get that problem resolved. Paramedics has all the shots and stuff like that needed. I'm really annoyed with this guy here standing in my work area. Because he may be the police, but he needs to be about five, six uh, uh, feet away from what's going on. He's not part of the disperse response team. He needs to be going out of my way so I can get my job done. That's what he needs to do. So I got a patient here that will not respond. He has to leave right now. Not next year, not after this idiot gets out of my way. He has to leave. He's just way too close for the work area. All right. We got to go. So we made it. Yeah, I know. I thought it was not about rush, 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 rush. Well, you know what? His heart is out of rhythm. It isn't working out. It's not like I got IV push and all the other cool shots and IV bags that you would find on a paramedic truck he has to go to the hospital right now because he needs to because he's not going to make it if I don't so that's what that's all about because you know you the um, <laughs> uh, some of the stuff that's explained to me is that you have to stabilize your victim true but if you can't get that heart to go back into rhythm well then you will be sitting there all day messing around with them and you and you can't he has to he has to go as soon as possible to uh, some kind of uh, he has to get to the hospital so there's no waiting around on that because there's only so much you're going to get done in the field. I mean, the rhythm, it's out of rhythm. It's doing something which is better than a flat line, uh, in my opinion. So I have this call right down here. <laughs> is he unconscious? Or did he get run over by that truck? Okay. Items, medical bag, because this is where everything's done from. Looks like he run over by the truck. Oh, back to patient. No pulse, of course. He's on conscience. I'll have to grab it anyways because there's no pulse so I already know how that's going to go down
gun. Whatever it takes, it's that's frustrating. All right. Hey, check that out. Okay. By all means, now we can get this. Which, it's, what I'm looking at is that where it's sitting, it's going to, um, Have, it, everything is going to be blocked and I'm looking at it being all clustered up. See, the, because this truck is in the way. Alright, well, he's got a pulse, so... That's a start. Now that we're going to transport him, we'll just go ahead and put on that neck collar. Then we'll go ahead and uh, get him to that hospital. See how, you know, the one guy couldn't get his heart going so correctly, so I didn't even waste my time with it. It's, I took enough time with it, and I needed to get out of there. But, you know, still an emergency. This guy has to go, so let's get him transported. Drive to the hospital. So as you can see, it's it's really probably one of the more kind of simple roles to play. Uh, but the um, but on the same coin, it isn't that simple. As you can see, I was able to get one patient going, but the first patient, there was no getting him going at all. He he had to go into the emergency room. He had to be transported there. So there's. There's only so much you can do uh, uh, before the body starts shutting down and then um, organs start quitting and the person expires. So there's no messing around with that. So it, he had to go. Uh, I spent enough time on it. Also, before I forget, if you have a partner here helping you out, partner can ride back here with the patient I have a tendency to do that when I'm on line working with other players I have a tendency to ride back here with the patient during the transport to the hospital so anyways that's about it have a good day